Hey there, I'm Dr. Bob and welcome to my video series on applied game design. In this video, I'm going to talk about games as design experiences. So if you haven't been living in a bunker for the past couple of decades, I'm sure you've noticed that games have been used in a lot of non-entertainment fields. For example, the Games for Change conference lists 18 tracks of fields in which games have been used recently. And those tracks include a whole bunch of fields, things like education, business, politics, science, technology, health, even empathy. In all fairness, game design has been applied to pretty much any field because it's great to help us teach, to help us motivate, and to help us engage people. So in this video, I'm going to talk about why games are good at doing this. Why are games so good at getting people to learn stuff? Now obviously, that's a really big question. But for me, it starts with one concept. It starts with games being designed experiences. Design experiences is a term coined by Kurt Squire who is a very accomplished professor in games and learning, he is credited on Civilization 4, and he plays a mean harp. Now, this is what he has to say about games. And this is a concept we've been developing to describe the way that games are more than just a media or a resource or a text that you learn from, but something that you learn within and you learn through interacting with. So good games and good learning are really possibility spaces that allow you to step inside of them and explore and experience new kinds of things and ultimately become new kinds of people. In other words, games are an experience. In a game, nobody is telling you how the world works and how to feel about that. Instead, they are giving you an experience that you learn from through interaction with it. In fact, in a game, you typically learn by coming up with your own hypotheses about how the world works and then experimenting on them by trying them out in a safe environment. Oftentimes you'll do this as yourself, but a lot of times games offer you the opportunity to do this as a completely different being. And that might not sound like that big of a deal, but it's actually quite the game changer. Let's make a comparison here. We've all been in this kind of classroom. The Holly Smoot Tariff Act, which anyone raised or lowered, raised tariffs in an effort to collect more revenue for the federal government. Did it work? Anyone? Anyone know the effects? All right, so the traditional classroom, as made fun of here in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, typically consists of a teacher explaining abstract ideas in front of the classroom, and then it's mostly geared around retention and reproduction of information. Now, oftentimes, this leads to undesirable outcomes, in particular with regards to student learning and motivation. Now, here's a different kind of classroom. Uzi's going legendary. He's able to find the kill onto the Gragas. SKT are now on the Nexus turret. Will they get the Nexus? SKT, Let's... they play the map right, and they <laughs> find the Nexus. Now, that might not look like your typical classroom, but anybody who's played at that level will tell you you're not going to get there without picking something up along the way. Or in the words of Sean Bean, One does not simply game without learning. Now, silly overdone memes aside, League of Legends has actually been related to a lot of real-world skills, including teamwork, patience, self-control, and succeeding under high pressure. And League is just an isolated example. In fact, I would argue that any game out there can teach you something that you can use outside of the game to help you succeed at your goals. In fact, here's a clip of Kurt Squire talking about how games actually inspired him to come up with the idea of designed experiences. So my own thinking about this goes back, oh, 30 years, I guess, to the Commodore 64. And I was playing a game called Sid Meier's Pirates, which was an awesome game, where you got to learn through being a pirate. So fast forward about two or three years later, I'm in history class and we're studying the Caribbean. And all of a sudden I find myself in class during discussion knowing all kinds of things about being a pirate that made really no sense at all. So the teacher would ask us things like, what were the Spanish goals for colonization? And can anyone here draw a map of the Caribbean and describe where the Spanish main was? And I knew all of this stuff because years earlier, I had been a pirate sailing around the Spanish main. So if you're an avid gamer, I'm sure you have anecdotes like these of your own. In fact, I would guess that while you were playing a game and you were learning, you didn't even notice how much you were learning. And that's because games are just that cleverly designed when it comes to learning. They have a couple of tricks up their sleeves. For example, they start by giving you very clear and interesting goals. For example, be the last one standing, win the World Cup, rescue the princess, catch them all, build the world, rule the world, save the world, and get that old lady her frying pan back. 
Next, a game will carefully orchestrate time and balance your progression through it, so that skills and information are required and given at a time when it actually makes sense to you. Sure, those big goals will be around the entire time through the game, but there will be a lot more smaller goals that are all there at exactly the right point in time. So if you look at the same games again that I just summed up, they have smaller goals like land somewhere good, get the ball, squish the Goomba, pick your starter Pokemon, craft an axe, sell the city, and go find your guide. And all these goals are presented in a way so that new goals become easier because of all the past goals that you've already completed. It's like an ecosystem in which everything is interlocked and designed in a way to make you better, smarter, more capable, and more literate about the game world. So eventually you'll be able to create your own goals, to become a more wholesome version of yourself and maybe even redesign the game world for others. So you can go from things like this to things like this. And there you have it. That's what design experiences are all about. And with it, you'll find three tips for making better educational games. One, clear and interesting goals. Two, balanced progression. And three, system-based learning. So let's discuss that a bit. Well, normally I would talk to you guys now about the content of the lecture, but since we're online, I figured I'd just bring out the Corgi and have a little conversation with him. So in this lecture, we talked about how it's actually really hard to play video games without learning anything. After all, video games are design experiences and as such, they will teach us something for better or for worse. So I once was a top five Splinter Cell player in the world. And while that didn't help me with geography or history like it did for Kurt Squire, it did teach me a lot of team building skills and it teach me how to plan strategically and then improvise when those plans fall apart. Maybe most importantly, Splinter Cell taught me to keep my ego in check and make sure we don't lose the game because I'm trying to be a hero. But anyways, I learned a lot from Splinter Cell, but that's just the tip of an enormous iceberg of content and skills that I picked up through video games. For example, I know what the wonders of the world are or what the 10 Sephiroth are. And I can build a computer and program without ever taking a CSE class. Video games have been pretty good to me, to be honest. Now, that's my story. I would love to learn what your story is with video games and learning. We have an online platform that you can use to post your thoughts on and to discuss the contents of this lecture. I would very much like to invite you to do so. And if you need some talking points, well, here you can find a couple of them. All right, and that's it for this video. So me and Reggie here, we'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.